Hi everyone, it's Veronica from Blue Star Crochet. Thank you for joining me for this uh, beautiful crochet project. So I'd like to introduce you to the Derby Tunisian Crochet Blanket. So as you can see, it's quite large. I cannot quite fit it all on camera, but let's just have a look at the construction of this beautiful blanket. As you can see, it incorporates five different colors. And the reason being that if you've got five colors and you stick to the same color order it will actually create these beautiful uh, stripes of color and it kind of looks like they are not in any particular order but if you follow the color sequence they will actually create this beautiful um, pattern so how are we going to go about working on this blanket we're going to start firstly with this tiny little square in the middle. That's all it's gonna take to start your beautiful Derby blanket. So we're gonna start with a few rows of uh, Tunisian pearl stitch. So this whole blanket is worked in Tunisian pearl stitch. And we'll start with this beautiful little square. Then we're gonna turn the square on its side and we're gonna work this little section in a teal blue. Then we turn the blanket again this way and we're going to be working this yellow part which is going to be across the white square and down the side of the teal stripe. Then we're going to turn it again and I think you clocked onto how we're going to keep working. Then we're going to work this pink section that works down the side of the first square and down the side of the yellow stripe and then we're going to finish it off with this blue section here that works across the two sides of the, the sides of the two stripes and across the square. And then again, as you can see, if I turn it this way, then we're going to start with the white yarn again, working across the sides and the top of that stripe there. OK, so we're going to be going round and round and round again, working in simple stripes of colors so all we need is five rows of tunisian pearl stitch each of these stripes is um, consists of five rows of tunisian pearl stitch and picking up the stitches around the squares all down the sides of those stripes is really really easy um, because tunisian crochet kind of gives you those beautiful edges to work with no matter which side of the square or of the stripe you're going to be working on, you're going to have nice loops to pick stitches up through. As you can see, here are a few materials that you will need to complete this project. So let's start with um, the hook. So I'm going to be using a six millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. I've got two types of hooks, as you can see, because to start with, you could actually use a long metal Tunisian crochet hook um, until it gets to the last few um, rounds or the, the last few strips of blanket that we need to work because there will be quite a few stitches. So if you struggle to fit all the stitches onto the classic um long Tunisian crochet hook I do recommend getting a Tunisian crochet hook with a flexible cable attached to the end so um this cable will comfortably fit um loads and loads of stitches and it'll be um enough for the blanket so the um long Tunisian crochet hook uh, this one is just a box standard set from Amazon and um this one with the flexible cable is actually um Adi um Adi brand. Um these are really really great and we're going to be using a 6 mm crochet hook there as well, okay? So that's the Tunisian crochet hook. Um as I said, you could start with just a long metal one um and then change to the one with the flexible cable or you can just start with the flexible cable straight away. It's totally up to you. So the second thing we will need is a tape measure, okay? Um, I'm, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but the gauge on the baby blanket isn't crucial. Of course, if you want to make the blanket to the specified dimensions in the pattern, of course, you will have to meet the gauge perfectly. But the beauty about this pattern is that it is a baby blanket and you can just um, work with the DK weight yarn or category three weight yarn until you're happy with the size of the blanket. It's pretty, once you kind of... Um, 
start the blanket and work out how it is that you make the blanket you can then kind of carry on until you're happy with the size or you can carry on until you kind of reach a, a king size bed size so it's it's totally up to you but just to kind of check um on the gauge measuring tape or just to keep track of the progress you're making uh, to see how big your blanket is we'll need a measuring tape another one is scissors now you will need scissors because we will cut yarn after finishing each uh, color so um there are a couple of ends per um color strip okay so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sugarcoat it there will be a couple of tail ends to sort out um after each um color strip so you will need scissors throughout your project to cut yarn and that brings me onto the um yarn needle of course we'll need the yarn needle to sort out the ends at the very end of your project and then last but certainly not least it is the yarn okay so this is the yarn i have used as you can see the balls are a little bit skinny because I obviously have been using it for the blanket so I have opted for five different colors and as I showed you previously how the pattern works if you have got five colors um, going around the four edges of the square because you've got five colors they will forever be changing but there will be a nice pattern that will come out at the end of the blanket so um, I'm using um, Hayfield Serda Hayfield baby bonus DK so this is like a value baby uh, DK weight pretty box standard um, here in the UK um, of course, you could use also um, a different yarn weight. Um, it's just bear in mind that if you use a thinner yarn, like a sports weight, baby sports weight, or a fingering, four-ply yarn weights, your blanket will grow slightly um, slower. Okay, so you can carry on until you're happy with the size or until you reach the size uh, stated in a pattern. But of course, if you use a thinner yarn, it'll take you longer to get there. And um, vice versa, you could actually replace the DK weight yarn with a worsted weight or category four uh, weight yarn. But of course, you will get to the desired size of the blanket um, a little bit quicker. You could also use chunky weight, of course, but just bear in mind that if you do make it as a baby blanket, um, of course, you don't want it to be too heavy, too bulky, um, for the baby so that is why i opted kind of for the middle of the road dk weight or category three weight yarn is perfect in my opinion and um if you look at the label it is actually machine washable and you can even tumble dry it i am not sure i would personally tumble dry it but um machine washable is definitely a good um good thing to have with a baby um, make because babies are messy let's be honest so <laughs> he'll probably spend quite a lot of time in a washing machine so um the Serda hayfield bo a baby bonus uh value dk is the yarn i have opted for um and these are the colors i have gone for you could actually choose your very own colors you can go for rainbow bright rainbow pastel rainbow um you could actually even just go black and white like a monochrome style blanket if you are making it for yourself or um for your own home decor um as your own home decor item you could actually just go black and white um uh, monochrome and it will um come up with a beautiful pattern as well so um those are our supplies so let's get into it let's get into the tutorial and i'll teach you how to work the tunage and pearl stitch to start with uh, when we start making the square in the middle and then we're going to work around the square and by that point uh, i'm pretty sure you'll be able to just carry on uh, and carry on in the pattern and make it into a full-size blanket let's go ahead and start with the derby blanket blanket pattern i have got my five colors ready here and all i'm going to say is put them in the order that you're going to be using them okay so i've got my yarn a b c d and e 
and this is the color order that we're going to follow all the way through so once you finish with one color you just move on to the next color no matter what part of the blanket you're working on if you stick to the same color sequence it will come out in that beautiful pattern as you've seen in the beginning so i'm going to go ahead and grab yarn a which in my case is this white yarn okay and I've got my six millimeter crochet, Ginny Jane crochet hook ready. So I'm just going to start working with the long metal hook. Okay. To start the pattern, we're going to create a slip knot to put onto our hook. So I'm going to create loop like this. Okay. So I'm going to pick it up and put it over my fingers like this. Then I'm going to cross over the two ends and grab the tail end. To pull through and create this loop so this is a movable loop and i'm going to pop that onto my crochet hook and tighten it up okay so this is your slip knot created to start the pattern the square in the middle consists of 15 stitches and we're going to work up 10 rows in tunisian pearl stitch so let's go ahead and start our foundation chain so let's yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through so we're basically creating the foundation chain and we need 15 foundation chain stitches so i've got two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so the thing with Tunisian crochet is the amount of stitches that you chain at the beginning is the amount of stitches that you will have for your project. So, in order to have 15 stitches for your project, we need to chain 15. Okay, the thing is that the first loop on your hook, which is the loop out of the 15th chain, counts as the first stitch, okay? So let's go ahead and work the setup row for Tunisian crochet. Um, this is pretty much the standard way to start any Tunisian crochet project, unless the designer um, tells you otherwise, okay? So I've got the first loop on my hook, which always counts as the first stitch in this pattern, okay? So I've got one. Then I'm going to insert my hook into the second chain from the hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. I'm going to leave that loop on the hook. Then I'm going to go ahead and insert my hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop and leave it on a hook. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat this process all the way across the foundation chain. And as I said at the beginning, that the number of stitches you chain is the number of stitches that you will have for your Tunisian crochet project. So by the time we get to the very last chain of this foundation chain, we will have 15 loops on our hook, okay? So I have just gone through the foundation chain. So this is where we're at. So this is our foundation chain and the first forward pass, okay? So Tunisian crochet, every row consists of the forward pass. So forward pass is when you go forward across the stitches and pick up all the loops onto your hook. And now we're going to work the return pass. So we're going to return back to the first loop and work all these loops off of our hook. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But let's go ahead and count together how many loops we've got on this hook. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and 15. Okay, so as I said, the number of stitches that you chain for Tunisian project is the number of stitches that you will have um, for your project. Okay, we have worked the forward pass. So now we're going to go ahead and work the return pass on row one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead 
and work return pass by pulling through the first loop on a hook. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through one loop on your hook. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook at a time. Okay. So yarn over, pull through one and two. Yarn over, pull through one and two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay. And repeat this process until you have one loop left on your hook so let's go ahead and work this together so this is the return pass of row one and we're working across 15 stitches in Tunisian crochet okay so yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through the last two loops and then you can see you're back to one loop on your hook which always counts as the stitch so this is how we start the first row in Tunisian crochet and now we're going to go ahead and work the Tunisian purl stitch which is the stitch that I have used for this blanket the purl stitch is actually one of the good stitches of Tunisian crochet because it doesn't curl it creates a really nice fabric that doesn't curl at all so your blanket won't roll up and it won't be stubborn okay so the Tunisian purl stitch um, is very similar to the purl stitch in knitting so if you are a knitter this will be quite familiar to you if you're not don't worry we'll get through it so as you can see by going back and um, doing the return pass we created these loops for stitches okay so each stitch got these loops okay we've got 15 of them and this loop on the edge of this uh, v stitch on the end that's the edge stitch that we will not be working into because we already have the first loop on our hook which counts as a stitch so to create the pearl stitch or to create any stitches in Tunisian crochet it's basically all about these loops so you can go under the vertical bar you can go through the stitch to the back or you can even do reverse stitch and pick the stitches up on the back so that's the different ways that we create different stitches in Tunisian crochet but that's probably for another tutorial let's concentrate uh, on the Tunisian pearl stitch which is the stitch that we need for this blanket so the way we're going to insert the hook is under the vertical bar okay for the purl stitch so you can see these vertical bars across your work okay so that's the next vertical bar so we will be inserting our hooks just under the vertical bar like this okay so that's the vertical bars there and that's where we need to um, insert our hook okay the slight change with the purl stitch is with the working yarn that we're working with okay normally you would keep the yarn at the back but for the tunisian pearl stitch and this is the same uh, this is the similarity with knitting we need to bring the working yarn to the front okay so we can do that two ways the first way you can kind of drop the yarn to the front okay so the yarn is behind your hook and we're gonna let me tighten up that loop okay so we're gonna drop the yarn to the front insert the hook under the next vertical bar okay so drop the yarn to the front insert the hook under the vertical bar then we're gonna grab the working yarn again and go and yarn over the hook and it creates this little loop, this little anchor at the front of the stitch. Okay, so if I yarn over, you can see this little anchor at the front. So what you can do for neat results is just place your thumb on that loop, then pull the working yarn through like this, let go of the loop and just tighten it up ever so slightly. Okay, so let's do that again. I know this, this might be a little bit alien to people, 
but if you're a knitter this should be pretty easy so let's go ahead and work under the next vertical bar so working yarn to the front of your work then insert your hook under the vertical bar pick that working yarn back up and go and yarn over your hook again place your thumb on that little anchor bit of yarn on that little loop at the front this one so I'll place my thumb on there pull the hook through the loop then let go of that bit of yarn and just give it a gentle tug don't tighten it too too much because we want them we want those little loops at the front because that's what's going to create that pearl look okay so again yarn to the front let's insert our hook under the vertical bar then let's pick up the working yarn and go round the hook okay i'm gonna place my thumb on this piece of yarn here just to hold it down a little bit pull through the loop and then let go and just give it a nice gentle tug there we go so this is how we're gonna carry on and i know it might take a little bit of practice but trust me after you finish this first little square of the blanket you will have it worked out okay so as you can see it's creating those little pearl looking stitches at the front by kind of looping the yarn around the um stitch that's what's going to create the pearl look um, of your stitches okay so let's carry on and do another stitch okay so this is one way that you can do the tunisian pearl stitch okay the other way which i find slightly easier because you don't have to keep kind of letting go of your working yarn and dropping it back and forth what i do is um, I kind of change the position of the working yarn with my hook okay so I normally go behind the working yarn so it's the same as dropping the yarn to the front as you can see okay so I go behind the working yarn with my hook insert my hook under the vertical bar of the next stitch and then drop that little loop to the front hold it down with my thumb, yarn over and pull through, okay? So this is, um, you will work your own way out with the Tunisian pearl stitch. There is no right or no wrong way to do this, of course. Uh, you will work your own way out. Uh, I'm just showing you a couple of different ways of how you can possibly do it. But honestly, it's totally up to you. If you want to wrap the working yarn around your head or around your nose, because that works for you, that is completely fine. Do what works for you. Don't be afraid to feel like, oh, well, this is not how they showed me in the video, but this is how I find it comfortable. By all means, honestly, wrap it around your husband. If that works, it's totally fine. Okay, so these are just a couple of ways I'm showing you how to do the pearl stitches. So you can either... Drop the working yarn to the front, insert your hook, then pick it back up and wrap it around your hook. Hold down that little loop at the front, pull through, and just give it a slight little tug so it's all nice and neat, okay? Or the other way to change the position of the working yarn is go with your hook behind the yarn, insert your hook under the vertical bar, then kind of drop it to the front, hold it down, yarn over, pull through, and then just give it a nice little tug to make it all nice and uniform, okay? So that's a couple of different ways you can work the Tunisian Pearl Stitch. And once you work out how to do this, it will be like second nature okay so i've just gone ahead and worked across the remaining vertical bars okay so here we go and that brings us on to the very last stitch which is slightly different so i worked under the last vertical bar and then when you look at Tunisian project and when you look at the side here you've got the v stitch there okay so the very last stitch is just going to be a standard stitch so my working yarn is right at the back 
no change there. Insert the hook on the both strands of the last stitch like this, yarn over and just pull up a loop through the last stitch there, okay? And this is the second row forward pass. So again, forward pass because we've gone forward across the row and picked up all the loops onto our hook. So now we're gonna work the return pass by working the loops off of our hook, okay? Again, we are gonna, the return pass is the same for all the rows. So yarn over and pull through first loop on your hook, just the one. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook, all the way across. Pull through two, pull through two, all the way across until you have one loop left on your hook. Okay, so just keep going until there is only one loop on your hook left. I have come to the end of row two, return pass. So as you can see, I'm back down to one loop on my hook. And now we need to work up 10 rows of this Tunisian pearl stitch, okay? So let's go ahead and start another row of Tunisian pearl stitch again. If you look at the edge of your project, this is where you've got these V stitches, but we're not gonna work under those V stitches because the first loop on your hook already counts as that one stitch. For a neat edge um, on this side, if you leave this loop really loose, obviously this V stitch is gonna be really big and loose. If you tighten it down, a little bit more like this it's gonna the smaller loop is gonna create a smaller v-stitch on the edge the reason i'm pointing this out at this point is because we are going to be working through these v-stitches and if they are really really loose you're gonna create um quite a big gaps when you then join on to the other um colors the other strips of yarn okay so bear in mind that these need to be nice and neat and the way to get them really neat is just to tighten that first loop down as much as you comfortably can, okay? So that's the first loop on my hook, count as the stitch. And let's go ahead and work the next purl stitch under the next vertical bar, like this. So that's purl stitch. And again, I'm really used to changing the position of the working yarn by kind of going behind with my hook, insert under the vertical bar, hold on to that little anchor yarn, yarn over and pull through, okay? And this is basically what we need to work these purl stitches to create 10 rows, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and work up that little starting square in the middle of the blanket. And I'm gonna meet you back when we have 10 rows of this Tunisian pearl stitch for the basic square. Here we are at the end of row 10. So I have finished my little square that is gonna sit in the middle of your blanket. The way you can check if you lose count of how many rows you have done, you can easily look to the side of your work and just count the V stitches on the side of your work, okay? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's um, how you will know that you have done 10 rows of the Tunisian pearl stitch. And as you can see, I have just finished this square, so I haven't blocked it. And this is what I was saying about the Tunisian pearl stitch, that it doesn't curl at all. So this is lying nice and flat and it's not curling up on you. The other thing I was gonna point out to you, um, really do make sure you tighten up the first loop so you have neat, V uh, loops or the neat edge stitches because as you can see these first two I haven't tightened them up so much and they are rather large okay so you can see that they look a little bit messy but from then on um, I made sure that I tightened up this first edge stitch um, so it looks nice and neat and you can see these two are kind of 
kind of large so when we then come to work across this edge of that starting square these first loops will create quite a big gap as opposed to these uh, neat ones down the edge so like i said to keep them nice and neat all you need to do is when you have this first loop on your hook make sure you tighten it down as much as you possibly can so it's nice and neat okay so um this is row 10. I've done the forward pass and the return pass. So all I'm going to do is just pull through or chain one. And this is when you can cut yarn. Okay, cut yarn and pull through to tighten it up. Okay, so this is your starting square or the first square finished. Um, what we're going to do is now work down this edge. Okay, so if you've got the starting tail end on bottom left, and the uh, yarn you have just finished off on top right, okay? What we're gonna do is turn it this way. So turn it on its side. And what we're gonna do is insert your hook. As you can see, these V-stitches down the edge. I'm gonna insert my hook and the both loops of the last stitch on row number 10 of that square, okay? So this is where you need to insert your hook. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my next color, which is this beautiful baby teal or baby green. And I'm going to join yarn into that stitch. OK, so the way I join yarn is I pull up a loop. Then I chain one with the tail end like this. Let go of that tail end. Then I grab the working yarn and pull through that loop again. OK, and then I'm going to grab the tail end and pull down on it firmly and tighten down my loop. Whatever way you feel comfortable joining yarn, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, if you like the way I did it and you want a slower um, video tutorial, it is available on my YouTube channel as well. So you can go ahead and work it out. Now I have got my yarn joined in the first edge stitch here this first loop is going to count as the first stitch again okay so i'm going to tighten it down and then i'm going to pick up loops through each of these stitches all the way down the edge of the square so again just treat this like the foundation chain when we started the first square okay so i'm going to insert my hook into the next um stitch and the both vertical bars yarn over pull up a loop like this then go ahead insert into the next edge stitch and the both vertical bars yarn over pull up a loop and carry on all the way across the edge of the square and again because we have 10 rows or 10 stitches in front of us we should have 10 loops on the hook okay so just carry on all the way down the edge picking up through the edge stitches and leaving the loops on the hook so let's just double check on ourselves two four six eight and ten okay so by the time you pick up the loops down the edge of your square you should have 10 loops on your hook okay so this is the forward pass we've done the forward pass row one and now it's same again the return pass is going to be yarn over pull through one and then yarn over pull through two all the way across these loops until you have one loop left on your hook Okay, so just keep going until we go through the last stitch and one loop on a hook. So this is row one of the um, second part of the blanket. And again, once you do this setup row, it's back to Tunisian pearl stitch again. So I'm going to go behind the working yarn under the vertical bar. Then yarn over and pull through behind the yarn 
under the vertical bar, hold it down, yarn over and pull through. Okay, and basically row two is Tunisian pearl stitch all the way across until we get to the very last stitch where we will be inserting your hook and the both loops of the very last stitch okay on the both vertical bars so again look to the side and and the both and the both strands of the last stitch and pull up a loop again check on yourself two four six eight ten and then return pass is yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two all the way across until you have one loop left on your hook. There we go. So that's another row. And you might get a little kind of, you might get that it's it's pulling in a little bit. Um, don't worry about this, that is easily um, sorted out by blocking, okay? We will block the blanket at the end and all the stripes will um, line up really nicely, okay? So don't do the return pass too tight, okay? So if you loosen up on your return pass, it will be, there will be plenty of yarn to then stretch it into um, the position when we block it so it's not kind of pulling in, okay? And now with this teal color, we will work up five rows. Okay, so each the each of the color strips around the middle square is only going to consist of five rows. So I'm going to go ahead and work up three more rows um, in this color, and then I'll meet you back when we're going to be working down this side um, of the square. Here we are at the end of the second strip. So as you can see, I have got five rows. So just double check on yourself. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's the five rows. What we're gonna do is again, fasten off. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through, then cut the yarn and pull it out through like this to fasten it off, okay? So if you leave the current uh, strip that you did at the top, what we need to do is again, you need to turn 90 degrees to the right. Okay, so like this, whoop. And now we're gonna be again, starting another strip in a different color, picking up the stitches across the edge stitches of the last strip that we did. Okay, so that's this one here. So we're gonna be again, working through the edge stitches of these rows and then across here which is the underside of the foundation chain of this square that we did okay so we're kind of at the bottom of the square that we did so because we did five rows of this strip we will have five stitches down the edge and because we started with 15 stitches for this little square, we're going to pick up 15 stitches across the bottom of the foundation chain, which together will give us 20 stitches. OK, so the five and the 15 is 20 altogether. So again, I'm going to insert my hook and the both strands of the edge stitch of the last row. OK, so this is where we are. And again, I'm going to go ahead and grab my next color and just join it in. Again, you can use any joining method that you prefer. Like this. Okay, so that's the first loop on my hook. That counts as the first, first stitch, okay? So we have already joined around the edge stitch of the last fifth row, so I've got one loop on my hook already. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert and the both strands of yarn of the next edge stitch and pull up a loop. And I'm gonna repeat this across the edge stitches. And if I work into the last one, at this point, we will have five loops on the hook. And now that brings us onto the underside 
of the foundation chain of this white square. So I'm going to go ahead and insert into the first chain on the underside of the foundation chain. And then I'm going to go ahead and insert into the next one and each one across until you pick up 15 stitches across the underside of the foundation chain or 20 stitches all together. Here we go. At this point, as I said, you should have five stitches across the edge of that strip and then 15 stitches across the bottom of the foundation chain. So at this point, we should have 20 stitches or 20 loops on your hook. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Okay, so just double check on yourself that you've got 20 loops on your hook. And again, this is the standard return pass where we yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, all the way across until you have one loop left on your hook. And here we go. I have worked the return pass of the first row. And as usual, after you set up the first row, you can then go ahead and work next four rows of Tunisian Pearl Stitch to work up the next um strip of color here we are after five rows in a yellow yarn so again i'm gonna pull through and we're gonna cut the yarn and pull it through to fasten off okay again let's leave the last strip that you have finished at the top all we need to do is turn it 90 degrees to the right to carry on working across the edge there. So on this edge, again, we'll be working around the edge stitches of these rows, as well as the edge stitches of the rows of the first little square there. So we did five rows, so we'll have five stitches across there, and then we've got 10 rows of the first initial square so all together we will have 15 stitches to work with so let's go ahead and insert my hook through the first edge stitch of the last row and i'm moving on to pink yarn so again i'm gonna go ahead and join my yarn around the first edge stitch and this is pretty much the same again the first loop on a hook count as the stitch so i'm gonna go ahead insert into next one and pull up a loop and that's number three four and five okay so that's five stitches across the end stitches of the yellow part now we move on to the white part and remember when i told you that these first two loops i didn't quite tighten up well enough so they are going to create a little gap but for the purpose of the video tutorial just to show you that you can see these two um will be a little bit gappy but then when we move on and work around the other stitches that i actually have tightened up nicely you can see the difference there okay that's the last one there so as i said um in this part we should have 15 stitches so let's just go and count together so that's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen okay so we're right on track and again from this point onwards um again we're going to work the return pass so yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two all the way across so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and again work up five rows for the pink strip and i will meet you back uh, when we finish off the last one here we are at the end of row five of the pink strip so again i'm gonna yarn over pull through and cut the yarn and pull it out to fasten off 
So now we have gone across the three edges of that square in the middle. Again, we're going to turn it 90 degrees to the right and work up the very last section. And this last section is then going to be basically the repeat um, of the, the strips going forward because you, from now on, you're only going to be working um, across the you're only going to be working across the edge stitches of the strips on the sides or the top of the stitches of the last row okay so we've got the edge the top row and the edge then once we work up that strip if you turn it again you would have the edge stitches here top stitches, edge stitches, and so on, and so on. So this last strip that I'm going to show you how to do is going to be then um, basically the same technique all the way around the blanket, however big you decide to make it, okay? So again, I've got the strip on there, um, and we've got five rows of, across the strip. Then the middle square was 15 stitches across, and then another five edge stitches on this side. So we'll have five, 15 and another five. So all together, we should have 25 loops on a hook. For the stitch counts going forwards, uh, refer to the diagram um, in the PDF pattern or on the blog, okay? So again, I'm gonna insert my hook through the very first edge stitch of the last row on this uh, pink strip. And I'm going to grab my blue yarn, so that's my next one. We're going to join it in that first stitch again, however you join your yarn. And here we go. We're going to pick up our 25 stitches. So the first loop on a hook counts as a stitch. So into next one. And next one going forward. So at this point, when you go across the last strip, you'll have five loops on a hook. And then we need to look and insert the hook into the first around the edge stitch. But because obviously we have worked this strip already around that edge stitch, it's going to look a little bit like this gap here. Okay, so that's where we need to insert the hook again into this gap that we have already worked into okay because the bottom of the pink strip as you can see the last stitch is coming out of that edge stitch already so don't miss this one because your stitch count will be off so we've got five stitches there so i'm going to go and insert into that gap there which is the first edge stitch of the white square and then we come to the next stitch here. So we're gonna go through, so not under the vertical bar, but we're gonna go through the loop to the back, yarn over and pick up that loop. So this is basically like a knit stitch, Gina your knit stitch. So as you can see, that's the next. So this is the vertical bar, so I'm not gonna go under but I'm gonna go through that stitch to the back and pick up a loop. So you're essentially working Tunisian knit stitches. I found that if we use the knit stitch, it kind of um, stops there being a large gap between um, the two sections of the blanket, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and work or pick up a loop through each of these stitches until I get to the last one again. And this is the last edge stitch there again, where the first um, teal stitch is coming out of. So again, don't forget to pick up through the last edge stitch as well, okay? So at this point, we should have 20 loops on a hook five across these edge stitches and then 15 across the white um, square because the white square was 15 stitches wide so um, we should be up to 20 and then again we're gonna go and insert through the edge stitch of this teal strip and 
every single one thereafter okay so we should have 25 stitches at this point so let's just lay it all flat and double check that at this point we have 25 loops on a hook so let's just check 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25. Okay, so again, double check on yourself every time you pick up. It's only for this first um, row when you kind of picking up stitches across the blanket because once you have the loops on your hook, then you will know that you've got the correct stitch count. So again, five stitches across the pink. 15 stitches across the white and then another five stitches across the tail on the other side okay and this is basically the last um last strip to finish off the first round of the different colored strips and as i said this is going to be the repeat um going forward where you'll be picking up through the edge stitches of the strips on the side and then through the top loops of that strip in the middle okay the thing to watch out for at this middle part is the edge stitches, okay? If you pick up just through the loops, you will be two stitches short. So if at any point of the process of making this blanket you are short on stitches, it's very likely that you did not pick up the stitches through the edge stitches running down the side of this white part, okay? So the two stitches either side here, with the 13 stitches in the middle, that is very likely where you might be losing your stitches. So that's a bit of troubleshooting there for you um, if you're short on a stitch count. So I'm gonna go ahead and work up the five rows of this blue part, but um, I will meet you back and I will show you how to then cast off the stitches for when you are on the very, very last round um, of your of your blanket, okay? So we're going to work up four rows and I will meet you back to show you how to work the Tunisian cast off for the very, very last round. So once you work up, say, 10, 15, 20 rounds of these strips, however big you want your blanket to be, uh, on the very last uh, rows of those strips, you will be kind of casting off because if you don't cast off, you will be left with these gaps between the stitches. But that's obviously not what we want for the very um, edge of the blanket. So I will show you how to work the cast off in a neat way so we won't have these large gaps. I have worked up five rows of the last strip to kind of finish off the whole square. So we have worked all four edges of the uh, starting square in the middle. And as you can see, I have got five rows on the last strip, but I have only worked the forward pass, okay? When you come to the very end of the blanket, so when you're working the last um, strips around the four edges, we're gonna um, do a Tunisian crochet cast off. So we're gonna work the very, very last return pass on the edge of the blanket differently so it doesn't leave um, big gaps uh, like you are left if you just work a standard forward pass. So let me just repeat that. This next technique of casting off um, is for the very, very last row of your blanket once you finish with the size okay so if you want to work another kind of row of strips um or round of strips around do not cast off this way so this is for the very very last edge of the blanket okay so once you finish with the size once you worked up the size you're happy with this is how you work the last return pass or the last cast off at the edge of the blanket Otherwise, if you are planning to kind of keep going round, you just work the standard return pass as we have been working on um, up until this point, okay? So, as I said, I've got five rows worked up and I worked forward pass of the last row and I'm now going to show you how to cast off um, these loops for the very last row of your blanket once you finish with it. 
So for this technique, we will actually need to bring in a second hook. This is a standard four millimeter crochet hook, and I'm going to show you how to cast off these loops without leaving the bigger gaps that you find you have when you just work a standard return pass. So for this technique, we're actually going to do something that you never do in Tunisian crochet, and that's turn your work. OK, so we're going to turn our work. And we're going to be working on the wrong side of your blanket or on the wrong side of your square. So what we're going to do is I've got the four millimeter crochet hook and we're going to now work these loops off of this big Tunisian crochet hook. OK, so the way to do that is I'm going to insert my hook through the first loop. OK, and I'm going to yarn over and pull through that loop like this and then I'm going to take the original loop off of that hook there and just tighten it down a little bit so we're going to be working with two hooks it's going to feel a little bit like knitting with hooks but just bear with me and I promise you it's all worth it in the end so then I'm going to go ahead insert my hook into the next loop like this and I'm going to yarn over pull through that loop Okay, and I'm going to take that loop I have just worked through off of that hook, which leaves me two loops on this hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through the two loops like this. Okay, so let's repeat that again. I'm going to go through that loop, through the next loop on that hook, yarn over and pull through, then take the loop I have just worked through off of that hook because I have already secured it. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through the two loops on my right hook. OK, so let's do that a few more times together so you get the hang of it. So I'm going to go insert my hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through that loop on the hook, then take the loop off the hook at the back of the left hook, like this, because we secured it. And then I've got two loops on this hook, so yarn over and pull through the two, okay? So again, insert my hook through that loop on the Tunisian hook, yarn over, pull through the loop, like this, then take the loop off of that hook. And I've got now two loops on this right hook. So yarn over and pull through the two. OK, and this will basically finish off the edge and it won't leave big gaps um, in your work. So this is the Tunisian crochet cast off. Um, I mean, some designers do it differently. But I have never been kind of happy with the cast off techniques because it always left kind of a bit of a gap or it I just basically didn't like it. So I thought, OK, there must be something we can do to make this look nice and neat. So I'm going to go ahead and work all these loops off of the hook. Um, and I will meet you back and show you the finished edge on the right side of your work as well. I have worked the very last loop off of the hook. So all we're going to do is just chain one, cut the yarn and pull it through to fasten off. So here is the last row after we uh, did the cast off. So that's the right side. That is the wrong side. So it just gives you kind of that nice, neat edge um, across the top as well. Um, and it minimizes the, the gap that you get at the top um, with the last row. And it just makes it nice and neat. So um, if you then wanted to go ahead and add um, any further border onto the blanket, you can because you'll have a nice stitches at the top to work into as well. OK. So that's the um, basics of the blanket done. So this is how you then can go ahead and just 
um, keep working more and more rows or more and more strips on your blanket until you reach the desired size, okay? It um, will need blocking, as you can see. Um, these edges kind of need blocking out a little bit. That's what, um, so they just like to spring back a little bit, but with a um, with some blocking, they will sit nice and square, okay? Um, as I said, you can carry on working up the strip. So after we finish the blue one, you would again turn it 90 degrees onto this edge. And you will be working um, across the edge stitches, the top of the stitches and the edge stitches there. And then just keep going round and round and round again um, until you reach the desired size of your blanket. The other thing you could actually do is work up small squares like this. Okay, if you have got lots of yarn um, that you don't feel that you will have enough to do more than kind of this size of the strip or more than uh, the quantity needed for the middle square, you could uh, use your stash, use all um, kind of odd balls of yarn uh, for small squares like this. And then you can just... Um, once you cast off on all edges, you could then just kind of keep adding squares together until you um, reach, uh, until you have enough squares to make it into a full size baby blanket. So that's another way that you could use this pattern um, to go ahead and work up a baby blanket, but rather than keep going around one square, just stop at this size and work up um, as many squares as you need for a baby blanket um, using small squares like this. If you wanted to go down the route of working up smaller squares and then joining them together into a blanket, I would recommend them working the cast off um, around all of the edges on your last strip on your last strip. So um, you would work it on the last row there, last row here, and last row there. So you kind of get this neat edge. Um, across all your sides, which is going to then make it slightly easier to join um, the squares together um, with the others. Thank you so much for joining me for this beautiful, fun project, which is the um, Derby Baby Blanket. You can find a PDF version of this pattern in my shops over on Etsy or Ravelry. There is also a free version available on my blog, bluestarcrochet.com. Uh, if you enjoyed the video tutorial, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and give us the thumbs up uh, for the video. And I can wait to um, see your versions of the blanket and I hope you uh, will share them with me over on Instagram, Facebook or join my Facebook community group uh, for lots of extra tips and tricks and uh, pattern support as well. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time.